Today I've got for you a, I guess you could call it mid-century modern, um, older than that maybe, one of those Costco folding chairs that doubles as a stepladder. I have been fascinated by these for a while and I've always wanted one, but if you go to a peddler's mall or an antique mall, they're always so expensive. So I finally found one. I got it for 30 bucks and you can see it was in pretty rough shape. Um, had some pretty severe uh, scuffing to the chrome, some paint on it, uh, damage to the steps, damage to the the padding and the cover on the top seat. And I really wanted one that looked the way it was supposed to look when it was new. Um, but obviously didn't have a whole bunch of damage. So I started out by taking it all apart, and I'm going to go through this video kind of with you um, in chronological order. It's time-lapsed, but this took me all together an hour to do. Now, there was some dry time, you know, that I don't include, but it took me about an hour to do this all together. So I started by disassembling the entire thing. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do when I started, and I didn't know exactly how it came apart, so I just started taking apart everything that I could. I started with the steps, got rid of the steps, and I found that the treads on one of the steps was already peeling off. It came right off, no big deal, and I was able to refinish that a little bit later. But one of the treads on the other steps would not come off. Um, it was secured on there pretty well, so I left it, because I figured if it was glued on there and it was gonna stay, I was going to leave it and just refinish it the way that it was. Um, but this thing was fairly uh, easy to take apart. It was just a bunch of screws holding it together. I've actually been using it a lot since I refinished it. It's held up pretty good. The only problem is that I cleaned off all the paint on this thing and, you know, had it looking brand new. And then I used it to paint a room and got paint all over it. So in the finished shots, you're going to see it, but I actually did Photoshop the paint off of it because that's not the chair's fault. That's my bad for not paying attention. Um, but most of these, and I've looked at a bunch of them before, they're usually, they range from like 75 to $200 for a good, a, in good shape uh, chair. This one I got for 35 it really wasn't in that bad of shape. It was mostly just the cover that was damaged. Now there was paint on it and there was some scuffing to the paint the paint that was on it, um, but it, it was still in, in pretty good shape. Some of the bolts were rusted shut, so I had to switch to some WD-40 to get it apart. But you can see it's mostly just screws holding it together. Um, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a sweater and you see the timestamp photos at the end, that would be because I started this project four months ago, five months ago, finished it up and then thought, I'm not going to put any, I'm not, I'm not going to record a video for it. It's, it's really easy, but I figured why not? I've got the footage. Here it is. Um, the chair, you're going to see a little later on how it latches, but the top of the chair basically just latches with little flaps of metal that you have to undo. Um, so what I did was just undo the flaps and pull the, the seat off. Now here you can see there was paint that had gotten on it at some point, I don't know how or when, uh, but I needed the paint off so that it would be a smoother finish when I, when I got done with it. And I started out using a wire brush and that worked okay, but I found that it didn't take enough of it off at a time for it to smooth everything out. It kind of just left strokes in the paint that was already on it and the paint that was not supposed to be on it. So I switched to my sander and I just sanded it smooth enough so that the lines where I had sanded it versus where there was additional paint and regular paint would all be pretty smooth. I had this Rust-Oleum high heat finish uh, spray paint and I used that because it was really close to the kind of almondy color that the chair already was and I was okay with the color. I didn't want to change it and make it look completely different. I kind of wanted to leave it the way it was. Um, since this video, I found that the easiest way to spray paint rounded things like this is to actually hang them up from something with a little bit of wire and just paint them that way, but I didn't have any wire to paint with at the time. So I spray painted it and left it and it dried okay. It didn't really get anything on it. Here you can see me lifting those tabs up to get this chair unseated. Um, and this is how a lot of older seats work. It's a shell that fits over an, a lower shell and it just snaps in. You can un, undo the metal flaps and just throw it down there. You can see me there laying out the fabric for 
the chair for the new seat, and I think it's a neat fabric. You'll see it's got a little bit of batting, padding underneath it already. So I didn't, I didn't add any additional padding. It's not like somebody's going to be sitting here for a long period of time or anything like that. Um, so I just kind of left it here. I'm showing you how I do the corners. If you've got any tips for folding fabric around rounded corners or any type of corners, I would love to hear them because no matter what I do, there's a crease, there's a fold somewhere, and it doesn't bother me. It's never really bugged me that there's creases or folds in a handmade project, but if I can figure out how to do it without creases and folds, that would be perfect. Because you see here, I'm kind of just folding the fabric over and around the shell, and it works. It works pretty well. But in the end, there is a small fold at each of the corners. And I would just like to figure out how to not have that crease, not have that fold. To secure it, the fabric that was already on there was just molded around. It had been there for so long that it was molded to the chair. Um, this new fabric had a lot more flex and give, and it was in much better condition, so it didn't do that. So what I did was I made little relief cuts in the corners so that I could fold the fabric a little easier and fit those shells back together a little bit easier. Um, and then I took my glue gun, which, side note, if you can get a battery-powered glue gun, I highly recommend it. This one's a Ryobi. I bought it before I uh, knew that Ryobi was only sold by Home Depot, and Home Depot doesn't have the best track record when it comes to supporting people like me, so wouldn't recommend Ryobi, but I would highly recommend a battery-operated uh, glue gun. It is so so much better than one with a cord and it's always getting in the way. I hate it. So here I am just using some glue to hold everything in place so that I can fit the shell back together. Eventually the fabric will do the same as the old fabric where it'll just hold that shape because it's been in it for so long. But this glue, because it's thin, it doesn't, you know, chunk up really badly. You can kind of glue stuff down and then just shove everything back together and you're you're okay. Now you can see with my battery powered glue gun, I'm burning myself a lot. Um, and that's just the way that I work. I just burn myself. That's, that's what I do. Um, but you can see I'm just folding it around. And when I come to a corner, I do both sides of the corner before I actually do the corner itself. And then when I get to the corner, I just fold in all the fabric as tightly as I can make one fold if I can and just secure it all in place. And you can see it looks pretty neat. It doesn't look bad or anything like that. It definitely doesn't look like it came from the factory, um, but you can see when you fit it on, you've got one fold on each corner. It looks okay, it doesn't look terrible. Um, so there I am fitting the tabs back in and that's it. The seat is done, it's all finished up. Now when it came to the chrome, I found that getting the paint off of it and getting anything that was on it off without scratching it, the only thing I could use was a wire brush. And the wire brush actually worked pretty good. It didn't scratch the chrome up too bad. It didn't do any major damage to the finish. So if you've got paint on chrome, as long as it's you know chrome in good condition, that should be a good way to get everything off of it. Now, I wouldn't recommend you using that on like your car, um, mostly because the chrome on most cars is pretty cheap and it isn't real chrome. It's a, a coating. I, I know it just for my real time job. Um, so don't use it on your car, but if you've got a piece of chrome furniture or you know some legs or something that need touching up, it's a good way to uh, to finish that without without marring anything. Um, here you can see I had painted that step that had tread that was stuck to it pretty well, and that I couldn't get the tread off. So what I did was I painted the step part first, the cream color, and then I taped off the cream color and painted the tread black. Um, it worked pretty well. I will say the tape lines were not perfect. So again, if you look super close at the thing, then you're going to see some flaws. But most people are not looking at it that hard. But there you can see all I did to refinish the treads was spray paint them black. That's all I did. And it held up pretty well. It held up so well that when I tried to clean the paint that I had gotten on it off, nothing would come off. So don't worry if you're painting a porous plastic like that, you can paint it with spray paint and it's gonna stick just fine. It's not gonna be a huge issue. And they're tread steps, you know, they're meant to be stepped on, they're meant to be messed up. So if you have to paint them again down the line, 
you know what paint you used, you can touch it up really easy. Um, now it's time for reassembly, and reassembling this chair was just about as easy as it was putting it apart. Um, here I'm putting the tread on last just because it felt easier. It, it felt like an easier process to put the tread on once the step was secure. I didn't want to put it on and then mess with the step a bunch. Um, you can see I'm concentrating here because it gets a little monotonous putting stuff back together. That's why I like making videos. If you can take a video of you taking something apart or a video of, you know, any of the pieces that are kind of complicated coming apart, I recommend doing that because it makes it so much easier to put everything back together. And I did put this back together correctly because like I said, I used it to paint an entire room and nothing fell apart on me. Everything stayed together didn't have any major issues. What I will say is on some parts of it, I did not wait for the paint to dry quite long enough. And so I did kind of mess up some of the paint. So make sure when you're doing this, even though the paint says it's dry after 15 minutes or whatever for handling, uh, make sure that you just wait, wait 24 hours if you can, just so it is guaranteed to stick. Um, to put the tread back on, I figured it was a good enough guess that that super glue would work and the super glue did end up holding it down but what I found is that it wouldn't stick right away it kind of took a little while to stick so I used a little teeny tiny bit of hot glue to hold it in place and then put the uh, super glue in as a more permanent bond once it finally dried uh, but the top stair was really easy it wasn't two parts like the bottom stair the bottom stairs on these are usually two different parts that you have to line up um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, things that I would do differently. Um, I would probably, what I would do when I taped off the stair, the stair that I painted with the tread on it is I would paint the stair like I did paint it with the cream color, tape everything off really carefully. And then I would spray another layer of the cream color because when you spray the paint that you've already painted over top of the tape, then you get a really crisp, clean line. I learned that and I just didn't do it. And if I had, I think I would have had a much cleaner, nicer finish, but you know, hindsight is 20, 20. Um, you can see there the tread fell off. So I ended up gluing it with hot glue and, uh, and, uh, super glue. But there I am flashing the camera with the lights for my drill because I wasn't paying attention. Um, the, something else that I would do differently, I would choose a thinner fabric next time. The fabric that's on these chairs typically is very thin. It is like vinyl, no padding, no layers. There is just the very thinnest layer. And I think that's why they rip so easily. So it, if you're not looking for super clean, crisp lines when your fabric is on the chair, use a thick fabric. It'll be more comfortable. It'll have batting on the back. It it will be more comfortable to sit on. If it's just a decorative piece, use the thinnest vinyl you can. And what I will tell you is using that thinner vinyl, you can actually use heat to mold it. And when you use the heat to mold it, it, it looks a little bit cleaner and you don't end up with creases. So here's the finished chair. Like I said, I Photoshopped some of the damage I did to it out, but I think it looks pretty good. I think that it turned out as good as it could have turned out for 35 bucks and some fabric. Um, let me know what you guys want me to do next because I really enjoy flipping stuff. I can't flip anything too big just because I don't have the space for it, but I'll just keep my eye out for little projects and maybe this gave you some inspiration. I will say this chair, very useful, very useful to have a little step ladder at all times. Um, but I really like it. Thanks for watching and I'll be back at some point with a new video. Um, but you can like, you can subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you again. Bye.